I am the fiscal policy analyst at Oklahoma Policy Institute. And at Oklahoma Policy, we use data-informed approaches to work towards an Oklahoma where all families can thrive. Today, you'll hear a lot from me. In this first presentation, I will start off the interim study by providing you with an overview of the sales tax relief credit in the state of Oklahoma. To begin this presentation, we'll start by covering some tax terminology so that to make sure that we're all on the same page when discussing these ideas. Then we will jump into the history of the sales tax relief credit, followed by a brief explanation of how the sales tax relief credit works. And then we will talk about the monetary value of the sales tax relief credit in today's dollars and how it has not kept pace with inflation. So starting off, what exactly are tax credits? They are dollar for dollar amounts that reduce what an individual owes in taxes. These credits can be refundable or non-refundable. Refundable means any credit amount left over after a person's taxes are paid off are refunded to the taxpayer. Refundability allows low-income taxpayers to benefit from that surplus tax amount. Non-refundable tax credits are less useful to low-income taxpayers because they tend to have a very low tax liability. Next, an exemption, which is similar to a deduction, is a dollar-for-dollar -dollar amount that can be deducted from an individual's total income to reduce their taxable income. There are two types of exemptions here that I want to focus on. There's the dependent exemption, which is when a tax filer can claim a child or children, elderly or people with disabilities that live with them as dependents and receive a deduction on their income, as we saw with Talisha. The personal exemption is when a filer can claim themselves as an exemption on their tax returns. So for a family with two working adults and three children filing taxes jointly, they could claim up to five exemptions which can significantly reduce a family's taxable income. Exemptions are a tool put in place to ensure that very low income households do not pay income taxes while alleviating the administrative burden of collecting taxes on small amounts of income. But most importantly, personal exemptions also link tax liability to household size through the dependent exemption. Oops. Lastly, I wanna talk about regressive taxes. Regressive taxes are those that are applied uniformly to all income levels, which puts a higher burden on lower income families because they pay a larger portion of their income in that tax. So let me give you an example to illustrate this. Sales taxes is one of these regressive taxes. Say two people are friends. One of them makes $50,000 a year, while the other makes $150,000. They both decide that they want to buy a used car each. And it just so happens that their respective car costs $8,000. The sales tax that they would pay on that $8,000 car is the same, $750. But when compared to their incomes, the $750 sales tax is 1.42% of $50,000, but only 0.5% of $150,000. We can see here the lower income earner is paying a higher percentage of their income in the sales tax. So let's cover the origins of the sales tax relief credit. The Oklahoma sales tax relief credit was created in 1990 when House Bill 1017 was passed. House Bill 1017 was one of the biggest education reform bills in the state's history, if not the biggest. You may all be wondering how education is tied to tax credits. The bill passed several reforms in our education system, including reduced class sizes, increased funding equity between schools, early childhood programs, amongst other things. As we all know, new programs cost money to implement. And to fund these, to fund these reforms, the bill included a half cent increase in sales taxes across the board. However, as we just saw, sales taxes are regressive and low- and middle-income families would feel a disproportionate burden from the sales tax hike because it would eat up a larger share of their income than it would for wealthier families. So legislators created the sales tax relief credit to offset the cost of the state sales tax paid by low- and middle-income families. So let's look at how it works. Firstly, the amount of the credit 
has not changed in over three decades, staying at $40 per exemption claimed, so per person. It is a fully refundable tax credit, which means families get the entire value of the credit through offsetting any tax liability and then getting refunded the remainder amount. Lastly, the sales tax relief credit has income eligibility requirements, allowing only individuals making under $20,000 annually to claim it. For families, elderly individuals, and people with disability, the income eligibility is expanded to $50,000 annually. The income eligibility has also not changed since 1990. Over the past three decades, the sales tax relief... I'm sorry, I have a quick question. Yes, is, go ahead. Is, is family defined as uh, one parent, one child, husband and a wife? How, how do you define family? Any, any of those. So one earning adult with a dependent. Thank you. The sales tax relief credit over the past three decades has lost most of its value because it has not kept up with inflation. It has lost 60% of its value or buying power in the, th in the three decades. Adjusting for inflation, the $40 credit from 1990 is only worth $16.15 today, just enough to buy one pizza. That's if you keep your toppings to a minimum. Along those same lines, the STRC, if it had just simply kept up with inflation alone, today the credit would be at $97 per person, which is barely even the amount to suffice buying one person one week's worth of groceries. These numbers illustrate that the STRC clearly needs to be updated. Over the years, the state's expenditure on the sales tax relief credit has been decreasing. From a peak of about $43 million in 2010, fiscal year 2010, down to a low of about $29 million in this last fiscal year, this decrease could be because the eligibility criteria for the sales tax relief credit has not kept up with inflation, so people who need it today don't qualify for it anymore, even though they might have in 2010. Along these same lines, the number of credit recipients has also been declining. The graph shows the number of exemptions, that's number of people that claimed the STRC for fiscal year 20, uh, from 2006 to 2024. And we can see here, there's a steady decline of people claiming the sales tax relief credit which indicates that either fewer people are claiming the tax credit or perhaps fewer households that need it meet the income eligibility. $20,000 in 1990 dollars is just a little under $50,000 today. So fewer people would qualify if their incomes have adjusted to inflation, but, their elig but the eligibility criteria has not. This table lists all the states that have some version of a sales tax relief credit, and we can clearly see that Oklahoma is significantly behind other states with our low credit amount. So let's dissect the sales tax relief credit policy and see what is working and what can be improved. What's working and what's great about the sales tax relief credit right now is that there is no phase in income requirements. This means that people making zero or close to zero dollars a year can still benefit from this credit. In this way, it provides targeted relief to low-income families. Because it is targeted it, to a specific income group, uh, it is also cost-effective. And the credit is refundable, which increases the effectiveness of the credit. What can be improved? We can increase the amount. We can index the amount to inflation. We can increase the income eligibility requirements. We can publicize it better to the public. And we can implement a phase out scheme so that individuals that are claiming the sales tax relief credit when they aren't eligible anymore don't face a benefit cliff. They don't just lose all the money that they were getting just because they make $50 more a year now. With that, I will take questions. A couple questions. One, um, when, on the... Um, 12th slide, I think it is, where it says fewer people benefit. Um, you had mentioned that some may not be claiming it. Is it not an automatic claim? No, you still have to file for to claim the sales tax relief mm -hmm. credit. So when you file your income taxes, you have to indicate you're eligible. 
If you don't have um, to, and if you don't have to file sales tax, you can fill out a form separately, but you still have to go through that process, process. of filling out a form. Okay. And then on the slide that has uh, the states that you have listed, are these the only states that provide a sales tax relief credit, or did you specifically? Pick these are out? the only states that provide some version of oh, a sales okay. tax relief credit. Okay. So it's offsetting the sales taxes individuals pay. Okay. I have a couple of questions, if that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Um, let me go back. I was just writing on my pages as I went through here. Okay, so the the um, ninety seven dollars. If we had kept up with inflation, you mentioned yes. Um, what's the inflation percentage that you use to determine that? Um, I just used an online calculator that accounts for inflation. Um, it would be the latest twenty twenty four okay. number. Okay, it. I'm sorry. Honest answer yeah. on, from my behalf yeah. is what you're no, saying. No, that's fine. It was an honest question. It was, it was an honest question and an honest answer. Um, so over here, you you show seven, eight states here, and Oklahoma's falling behind. Is this all of the states? Are there only eight states that offer this? There's credit? only eight states that offer some version of a tax credit that alleviates the burden of the sales tax. Okay. So we're ahead of several states by even having it, correct? We are ahead of several states by even having it. Yes, that is that is one perspective, yes. Okay, I just look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just hate to see it when, when we always, everything is always about Oklahoma falling behind. And it's it, it, sometimes all the facts aren't in. Yes, in, that's in true. In situations. So, so when I see those things, I just... It, it comes you want to, to get mind. the fuller picture. I don't. It's not. I'm opposed to this at all. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it when we always take a, a, a negative, negative approach. perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there a proposed? So I understand the cliff, and I actually, I think the cliff is a big problem. The question is, is how do you, how do you address the cliff, no matter what the situation is. Um, it's, it puts families in a situation where, to your point, they, they're receiving a benefit. They are starting, you know, especially conservatives, we like to say, well, we, we like a hand up, not a hand out, right? right? You know, and, and, and I actually do believe that. And so the cliff is a real problem yes. for me and something that should be addressed. But is there a proposed, um, model Absolutely. of what the cliff for this particular tax credit looks like and if so could you share that yes so you will me? be hearing about that in one the presentation by itep they have modeled three different ways that we can modernize the sales okay tax so it's later in the presentation it's later in the presentation but also senator uh, representative munson's um legislation at the back of this folder has a phase out scheme as well thank you yeah okay leader munson I think we've got all of our questions addressed so you can move on to your next presentation. It's your show today. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> but I think this historical data will be very... Historical data presentation. Yes, helpful. Thank you, Zach. Okay, as I said, you'll hear from me a lot today. Um, this presentation is going to cover some historical data on the sales tax relief credit, types of households that are claiming the sales tax relief credit. And before I begin, I want to thank the tax, tax Commission for providing us with this data. So today we're going to cover topics or information about households claiming the sales tax relief credit. And we're going to start with whether households claim it with what, what kind of deduction. Then we're going to look at data by filing status. And then we'll finish off with income distribution data. But before we do that, just one more terminology. What is a deduction? A deduction is a mechanism 
that allows people to deduct some amount from their income to reduce their taxable income. There are two types of deductions. There's the standard deduction, which reduces a taxpayer's um, income by decreasing a set amount. That set amount depends on the tax filing status of a household. So the example here I've shown you is if you file as a single individual, your standard deduction is $6,350. Itemized deductions are when a range of items can be deducted from a person's income up to a certain amount. In Oklahoma, the cap for the itemized deduction is $17,000. Itemized deductions are typically used by higher income earners. The following data that I'm going to show you points out one key fact. The sales tax relief credit benefits those that need it. So here we have a graph with the tax year on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis we have number of returns that are claiming the sales tax relief credit. In the dark blue part of the column, we show the number of returns that are filing using standard deduction. And we can clearly see that standard deductions are overwhelmingly used by a majority of filers. And since we know that itemized deductions tend to be used by wealthier households, this indicates that the sales tax relief credit is going to low and middle income families. Yes. Sorry, this no, may be a little fine. confrontational what I'm about to say here, but. Go ahead. I use itemized tax. Okay. Uh, deductions because I have a farm. Yes. I am not a high earner, Absolutely. as you well know, in my job. And so, so I, I sense that when you said that now a couple of times, that, that it's kind of derogatory. But oh, not no. not all itemized tax earners are, are wealthy. Absolutely, are wealthy by any stretch of the no, imagination. No, absolutely, and that's why we have a couple of people that are claiming the sales tax relief credit with itemized deductions. So there are individuals that are low income earners that claim the itemized deduction, but yeah. statistically speaking, most people that claim the itemized deduction do tend to be wealthier. Fair it's enough. not, yeah, it's not entirely an exclusive group. And I, Fair in enough. no means meant to be derogatory. Fair enough. I just, I, I, I have to use it and, uh, um, and I am by no means. Wealthy. No, absolutely. And I really, and I'm not even a higher earner really, but you're bringing Fair in enough. good nuances into this conversation. Absolutely. Um, continuing, <laughs> I made, I made my point on this slide. <laughs> Jumping to the next graph. Um, we have the same axes, tax here on the horizontal axis and returns claiming the STRC on the vertical axis. In the dark blue, we have single filers. In the red, we have married people filing jointly, yes. Um, in the yellow, we have head of households. And in the light blue are others, which includes categories like married filing separately or widowers. And in this graph, you can see that in any given tax year, single filers, which is the blue, the dark blue, and head of household filers, which is the yellow, claim the highest portion of um, sales tax relief credits. This is revealing data, indicating how tremendously beneficial the sales tax relief credit is for people living alone, like elderly individuals or young adults, as well as individuals with dependents, like single parents or those taking care of disabled or elderly um, siblings or a parent. Lastly, we have data on what income tax brackets are claiming the sales tax relief credit. So on the horizontal axis, again, we have tax year, but I limit it to only three years, showing you a range from 2014 to 2022. And on the vertical axis, we are now talking about exemptions claimed, which is individual people that are getting $40 each. In the dark blue is the lowest income bracket from $0 to $10,000. And each lighter blue color, as well as the gray columns, shows income brackets increasing by $10,000 each. And what we see here is that for all income ranges that are eligible for the STRC, the three lowest brackets making $30,000 or less are the largest portions claiming the sales tax relief credit. Again, driving home the point that sales tax relief credit reaches low income households. Even still, not everybody who needs it and qualifies for the sales tax relief credit is claiming it. Based on ITEP's modeling using publicly available data on Oklahoma 
citizens' income. They estimate in fiscal year 2024, about 60% of sales tax relief credit eligible filers are actually claiming the credit. The remaining 40% are eligible and not claiming the credit. That's about 260,000 Oklahoma filers. This means that the number of Oklahomans not receiving the credit is higher than 260,000 because one filer could have up to five exemptions. This is a huge gap. Question. Yes. This is just us. Absolutely. We'll, we'll just, a very personal it's conversation. It's easier just to answer them as we go. No, let's um, go. Why is that? Why? Well, I was about to get there. <laughs> I just may, maybe should just wait to the end. Um, so why is there a large income eligibility gap? Well, there's likely some people that just don't know about the sales tax relief credit. For others, they may know of the credit, but the work to apply for the credit may be too burdensome, especially if they don't typically file their taxes or they may not realize that they qualify. Can I follow up on that? Yes. Mr. So, so if they don't realize they're qualified, I guess are these people who are maybe going like doing turbo tax, like filing their taxes on their own? I would think if you have, and of course, if you have access to a tax preparer, you're, you are probably in a different income bracket to be able to go and share all that. Um, so in those programs or software like a TurboTax, H&R Block, those like bigger mm -hmm. name tax filing uh, companies and programs, d does that question not pop up based on their income? And that's what I meant by the auto filing yes. too. Like, wouldn't it highlight based on what they're filing and their W-2s or, or answer questions that they're answering, that question doesn't pop up? I'm not sure. Okay. And, and I would assume that because only, as we saw, eight states have it, mm. maybe those oh, maybe systems not. are not mm -hmm. set up to, to focus on such um, unique yeah. tax credits. No. Can Senator Munson answer too? Oh, absolutely. Is that because she speaks on the microphone? I, now, again, we don't know why people don't take advantage of the credit, but my guess would be that a chunk of those 40% of filers who don't or who could take advantage of the credit don't because of the additional piece of paper. 40% are eligible they don't file for it. If I don't have to file a tax return and someone doesn't tell me that there's this form 832 or whatever it is that I should complete to get 40 bucks, uh, then I won't do it. I don't know. And then the other part might be for some people, you know, they think the $40 is not worth the hassle. They don't want to just be on the radar screen. So we don't know why. That's a great question. Uh, most of those HR block and those filing systems, even the ones, the free tax systems, uh, are, have state tax law embedded in them. So those questions would pop up uh, if you were using a professional tax preparer or if you were using one of the free file systems uh, because it would load Oklahoma state tax law in. So that's probably not, they're probably not getting missed. Those individuals who are using tax preparation services are probably not getting missed from this tax credit. So would, would you think then that the people of the 40% the that are not filing that are eligible, would you think that would be more people who are not filing a tax return, a tax return at all? I would imagine. That, that would, would probably be, be the majority of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.